Welcome back to the show. So the authors of Tiny Imperfections are back with their signature warmth and wit. Their new book, Never Meant to Meet You, is a semi-autobiographical <laughs> novel about two women dealing with their own grief who lean on each other to move forward. And there's plenty of laughter along the way. Welcome to New Day, Ali Frank and Asha Yeomans. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank I am you. excited to, to start talking about this book. But first of all, I have to ask, what inspired you to be writing partners? Because that's a, that's a very close relationship <laughs> for anyone. Yeah, it is. You want to take that I'll one? I'll start with that one. You know, Allie and I joke that um, together, one plus one equals one. We, I mean, Aww. it's we, bad math, we, but it works. We make for us. one good writer. She has strengths that I don't have, and I have strengths that that complement her. And um, it's almost like a really good marriage. I was going to mm -hmm. say it sounds more successful than most marriages. We're perfect work spouses. So, <sighs> yep. That and is we, a beautiful and we thing. met. We did meet working together at a private school here oh, in Seattle. Really? So we knew each other's working style. We really knew each other's sense of humor. We didn't know if we could each write. You didn't know. You just kind of really. you knew that you worked together well, and then when the writing happened, it kind of just followed naturally. Yeah. Sometimes jumping right in, you don't know what you're not <laughs> supposed to be able to do, and. Once you're able to do it, it's like, hey, surprise, we did that. Okay, that gives me the chill. I want to put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Jumping right in, you don't know what you're not supposed to do. You can have it. Why do you think, aside from the fact that you work so well together, is your collaboration so successful? Um, you know, we're, we're both professional people. Um, mm -hmm. We were dedicated for so long to children and families. Mm -hmm. We both have a, a mission to bring joy and laughter to the stories that we tell mm -hmm. and we're both hard workers i'm committed to the work that i do and i don't want to disappoint Allie. and she always steps up to support me Aww. Mm -hmm. well and i would also add that we really even though we might look different on the outside who we are as people mm -hmm. our work ethic what we find funny what we find entertaining how we lead our lives is very similar. So it's easy for us to have a lot of conversation that ends up folding into our book. We talk more than we write. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes the process is slow. I, I, I love that. And I mean, my goodness, if you guys could handle parents at a school, then you can handle anything. I'm serious. <laughs> um, so tell us what the book is about. Uh, Never Meant to Meet You, like you said, is semi-autobiographical. We kind of used ourselves as a jumping off point mm -hmm. for our main characters. But we wrote it during the pandemic, and we were sort of struggling mm -hmm. with how do we express the grief that we're feeling over things we lost, graduations for both of my sons, oh. prom, um, school for Allie's daughters, mm -hmm. that elementary school is such a formative time. Yeah. Um, how do we express that? How do we get over that? And still keep a, a smile on our face along yeah. the way. Uh, so we put that into our characters. Some of the things that we wanted to say to the world about grief, yeah. we had our characters say it for us. And the characters are neighbors in this book, right? They That's are. what the two stores represent? They are neighbors. How does the difficult conversations re surrounding race mm -hmm. and religion, how did that factor into the process when you were writing this? I'm gonna give you that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ash and I both come from this place of believing that curiosity is something that all children have. When you're around children, they'll mm -hmm. ask anything, and it comes from a place of best intention, and it comes from heart. Yeah. And yes. there's something about when you become an adult, you lose your curiosity, and you build up a wall about wanting to know or find out about different types of people, mm -hmm. and particularly in this culture right now where you get your hand slapped so quickly, if you ask a question that others perceive is misguided, mm -hmm. and we really wanted to put out into the world, so it means we have to model for ourselves, be curious, ask questions, and most people want to respond because they understand the genuine way that you're asking, and if some don't, because some people will not appreciate your questions, that's not on you, yeah. that's on them, and you move on, but don't lose curiosity in people. So we just, we ask each other hard questions all the time, and we just stay in conversation until we're a place of agreement, and then we move forward. It's not always pretty, but we always get to the other side. We spent 20 minutes the other day working on our fourth book, um, debating 
the the difference between ba a baptism and a christening. Neither one of us is Catholic, <laughs> <laughs> but we work together until we get to that happy medium because every word on every page needs to represent both Allie and me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that you are trying to tell, you know, to kids to keep the curiosity and, and, and hoping that adults do too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips on how adults can have these conversations? I One of my favorite things mm -hmm. to say is to dare to make mistakes mm -hmm. to children. And I think that mm -hmm. goes for adults as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it's okay to make a mistake. You're not going to be, you should not be judged by one bad moment in your life mm -hmm. when you have a whole lifetime of wonderful moments. And to continue to be a lifelong learner. Always yeah. look forward to learning something about your fellow man, learning something from books, learning something from traveling experiences, wherever you can. Yeah. Well, and I would say my one tip is more of a, a daily practice is whether you're at the grocery store or you're at work or you're at your child's school, when you ask, seek someone out and when you really ask, how are you, mm -hmm. really want to hear the answer yeah. and seek out someone that's not your best friend, someone that might be different than you and just listen to that answer and that's just a great daily practice to really want to know how someone else is. I love is. that. Someone you wouldn't ordinarily stop and ask that question to. Yep. But you know, mm -hmm. you know, like a colleague that you don't really talk to that much. I'm going to do that today, so look out. Here I come for you. <laughs> um, the, your books make readers laugh and feel good, but this bigger message is really important too, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there is a history of studying other cultures and the things that we've been through as humans mm -hmm. to get to this point where we are that come from a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. sometimes a lot of drama. Yeah. And while that history is extremely important to have as a foundation to learn about other cultures, we have to appreciate that joy is what got us here. Mm -hmm. A love of life it was, is what keeps us going. Yeah. So don't forget to look for those joyful experiences yeah. um, when you're thinking about people mm -hmm. who are different from you. Yeah. And don't be afraid to laugh. I mean that it's such a common experience and there's nothing better than laughter, but we get nervous about laughing at something that might be different than us, but it's okay. Laughter and joy is the best part of life. And that's what we want to bring forward to people. Absolutely. Uh, thank you both so much. I'm so glad that you let it slip that you're working on a fourth book so we know what you're doing <laughs> next. Yeah. And of course, Ali and Asha are speakers at Town Hall Seattle this Wednesday, October 19th at 7.30. It's a conversation with Seattle author and New York Times bestseller, Tara Conklin. So go check that out. All right. We 